Welcome to this week's episode of The Better Half. I'm Kendra D. St. Aubin, and this is Katie Hartley. And we're going to take a look back at what's been going on this week. That's right, Kendra. A tragic story coming out of Penn State this week. Former defensive coordinator Jerry Sandusky being accused of some terrible, terrible things, being involved in a child sex abuse scandal. Um, a lot of people calling for Penn State to really clean house anyone who knew of or has been associated with any, any employee of Penn State right now. Um, a lot of people asking for them to step down. Joe Paterno included the head coach of the Penn State football team. Kendra, what do you think Joe Pa's legacy is going to be at Penn State? Well, I think that his legacy will definitely be tarnished. I'm pretty sure that every time you mention Joe Paterno, to Joe Paterno and Penn State football, you're going to also have to mention the sex abuse scandal and the fact that he may not have reported the things that he needed to report. So I think his legacy definitely tarnished. Um, I don't think it was right of him to decide to retire at the end of the season. I think he needed to step down immediately and not even coach on Saturday. But... It is what it is, and, and we'll see because the Board of Trustees still has a say in this. It's not just his decision like everything else is that has to do with Penn State football. Yes, and Joe Paterno released a statement today saying that he was devastated by the allegations and that with the benefit of hindsight, he said, I wish I had done more. And I agree with you, Kendra. I really feel like his statement today should have been that he was going to step down. I think it's the right thing to do, uh, not just in the situation, but for the victims and for the families. I really feel like it's time for Joe Paterno uh, to be the adult and to be the man in the situation and, and step down. Well, and I think part of his statement was also that he spent his entire career at Penn State for this team and for these players. And I think that was part of the problem. He was only focused on his team and the players. And that's kind of what got him in, his ma in this mess. And speaking of one of his players, Levi Brown said as well at Cardinals practice that you know he he does think his legacy will be tarnished as well that he doesn't think it can't be because of the current situation mm -hmm. and speaking of those Cardinals some happier news the Arizona Cardinals finally getting a win as they beat the Rams in overtime with a Patrick Peterson kick return a punt return let's take a look at it what do you think about this kid? I mean, I, I call him a kid. I don't even right. exactly know how old he is. I mean, but what do you think? I mean, is he definitely a candidate for Rookie of the Year? I think he's a candidate, and right now, I like Cam Newton for Rookie of the Year. I think Patrick Peterson is definitely a candidate for it. I like Cam Newton. I feel like Rookie of the Year has got to be the biggest impact player, and I feel like at this point in the season, Cam Newton is the one who actually brings up the talent of the guys around him, and Patrick Peterson has yet to do that. Cam Newton, we can clearly see see is the leader in that Panthers locker room. Well, and of course, with him being the quarterback, he's already going to have sort of an automatic edge as far as does he bring his team up more and more of an impact player because being mm -hmm. the quarterback. But I think you're right. I think Cam Newton is definitely has the advantage for rookie. Now, now we know they're on opposite sides of the ball, one's offense and one defense, but just kind of generally speaking. I, I love Patrick Peterson, though. I think what he's been able to do has been a real spark. And they did try to put him on offense last they week. They did. The play didn't work exactly, and they had to call a timeout. But who knows? Maybe we'll see it this week when they take on the Eagles. Yeah, the Cardinals definitely blew it in that play. Uh, and Alabama blowing it against LSU this weekend. Kind of a, a weird oh, game. It gosh. was not a very offensively fun game to watch. It was 9-6 to six was the final score, LSU coming out on top in Tuscaloosa. What did you think, Kendra? I thought the game was lame. <laughs> I was so excited. I was so fired up to watch this game and sit down. And I, was, I wasn't necessarily expecting this high-scoring shootout of a game, but I was expecting something more than that. I just think everyone was probably disappointed. No excitement, no energy. And it was just really lame. I mean, it was close, so you expect that from a 1-2, but I wasn't expecting a 9-6. And hopefully... With the matchup we have this week, and Pac-12 matchup with with uh, Stanford and Oregon, what do you think about that one? Can you compare the two games? No, I don't think you can compare the two games. I don't think it's even going to be close. We're going to see both Stanford and Oregon put up a lot of points this weekend. I think Stanford comes out on top. I think they're the stronger team in the Pac-12. What do you think? Well, you know, I think Oregon's going to end up with the win. I actually do because they're getting healthy, kind of healthy at the right time. They've got little Michael James back. But you know what? You never know what you're going to get with Andrew Luck. I mean, when he's the quarterback of your team like he is for Stanford, and he really does carry their team, talking about an impact player. I don't know. I think Oregon could come out on top, but it's going to be a good one. It's going to be high scoring. Yeah, sure. I'm excited about that. And we'll be back next week with a recap of Stanford, Oregon. That's it for us this week on The Better Half. She's Kendra D. St. Aubin. You can follow her on Twitter at Kendra620, and you can follow me at FunKatie620. We'll see you next week for another episode of The Better Half.